Deathclaw's hanging out up there. I kind of want to start sniping at him, but we should go back. We got business to attend to. A uh, certain Mr. House feller needs to get his, uh, I don't know, uh, 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 killed? He needs to get killed. I, I was going to come up with something clever to do with golf terminology, but I'm not smart enough for that, I don't think. <laughs> Alright, towards Mr. House we go. I swear, McCaffrey, <laughs> his body is going to go across the, across the strip before we're done here. Alright, back into Mr. House's place. I specifically brought Nefi's golf driver to complete a challenge. I don't know if you guys were aware of this. Where to, partner? Okay, now we're up at the penthouse. I don't think we have any more. Let's check. Let's check with our snow globes. Mr. House is just pleased as punch you got those old Securitrons back on mine, sugar. Yeah, she had nothing. Okay, let's go down to Mr. House's mainframe. Let's go kill him. Okay, terminal. I don't remember specifically the way we're supposed to go here. Is it back here? I think it might be back here. No. No. Because I know once once we like open up the door with one of the terminals, like all the Securitrons activate and start coming after us. That's gonna be fun. This one. Open antechamber. Yes. Yep, yeah, here we go. Nope, no missiles, please. No missiles. I should have switched switch my ammo. Switch my ammo. The pulse slug. There we go. Are you dead? Die, please. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. This is what it's about. Ah! No, no missiles. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on. Who else wants some? Let's go. Do you not... Do you not see me? No. Missile's bad. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. They just can't... Oh my goodness, they just can't get back here. I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna go back down. I'm gonna go down. Unlock control room elevator. Yes. I'm still unauthorized. All right, here's when it gets crazy. We're about to meet Mr. House face to face, ladies and gentlemen. Face to face. Oh, oh, we can't. Hello. I can't just talk to him like this. I have to. Okay, let's let's open him up. Unseal LS chamber. Yes. Come on out, Mr. House. It's about time. It is about time. I I love the introduction here. Oh no, spoilers! There he is. There's Mr. House. In all of his gross old glory. <laughs> they did a really got a good job on him, to be honest. Uh, look at him all hooked up to all this all this machinery and stuff like that. Alright. Let's, uh, should we talk to him first? I want to talk to him first. Why have you done this? Centuries of preparation. So much good undone. If personal gain, what you sought, should have done as asked. Time for you to die now, Mr. House. May there be a hell for you, a Tartarus, bleak, unending. I like the I like the voice modification they did there too. All right, time to get out our our golf driver. There we go. This is for the uh, slave obeys uh, challenge. Oh, critical strike on Mr. House. Can I? Oh, okay. Okay, one more hit. Uh, bleh. He's dead. He is dead. Good night, Mr. House. Sleep well. Can I put him back in? <laughs> Let's try. Nope, nope. Can't even access it now. Well, 
Did I get the challenge? Did I feel like... I feel like I should have gotten the challenge. I'm pretty sure I did. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Oh, we gotta go back to Colonel Moore. All the way back. We gotta shoot our way out, don't we? Hollow points. Okay. Switch back to our shotgun. This is gonna be fun, shooting our way out. Alright. Mr. House is dead. His grand dreams for New Vegas will never be realized. I know. Wait. There's only like one robot that wants to kill me. Excuse me. Why don't you want to kill me anymore? Huh. I mean, not that I'm complaining or anything. It's just very strange that uh, no, none of them want to kill me now. <sighs> All the way back out. So it's interesting. In reality, you only need to kill like three, like two guards, maybe three. That's great. <laughs> okay, back to the dam, I guess. You know, since I kind of have an idea of where this is going to go next, uh, why don't we just go to the White Gallup Society? Why don't we just skip ahead a little bit, just so we can go back to Colonel Moore and be like, everything's done, and then we can continue with the main, the main stuff. I should have done that from the beginning, but now I'm, I'm catching on to what's actually happening instead of just following markers. <laughs> The whole time. Uh, oh, let's see. There was a there was an old couple out here. So ah, oh, there they are. There they are. I need to talk to them first. Hello. Uh, let's see. Talk to his wife first. If you don't mind, I have to look after my husband. What are you and he up to out here on the strip? He's got his reasons. And when that man gets a notion stuck in his head, he's like a big horn or bull that's seen red. And if it means Heck Gunderson's involved, then you better step aside before the stampede tramples you over. What's so important about Heck Gunderson? If that's what you want to talk about, go see Walter. He'll talk your ear off. Everything he says about the evils of Heck Gunderson is true, but I've never held the notion that fighting evil with evil carries the world forward. Well, that's a good way to look at it. Goodbye. All right, goodbye. All right, let's talk to... Let's talk to Walter, then. Howdy, son. How can I help you? But make it quick. Goddamn heat's worse in this town than in the middle of a Brahmin herd at noon. Well, you look more than just too hot. What's the matter? Sharp eyes on you, all right. We've gone through a heap of trouble to get in town. Ethel says I just need to wet my throat. A drink? Nonsense. All I need now is to settle a score. We didn't come a long ways just to stroll our best clothes around. Settling a score? What's that about? There's a long list of grievances that Heck Gunderson's got to answer for, kid. I'm here to make sure that rancher stops stealing our lands. If he ain't chiseling behind your back, he just sends his men ready for a fight. Then you either sell your ranch for a penny, or you're dead. I'm tired of being trampled over, kid. And I got a good mind to stop Heck once and for all. I have no illusions that he'll ever stop his plundering. So I'm just gonna make him suffer. That's what I'm gonna do. Here in town, he's got a few of his armed men to protect him. I just gotta find out what he's up to, and then I'll know where to hit him hard. The best don't come cheap, Walter. 400 caps, my fee. All right, kid. I'm taking a liking to you. It's a deal. Where I come from, we appreciate good intentions. I reckon you could help me figure out what he's doing in town. Tell you what, that chiseler's blowing hot air over at that there fancy casino, the Ultra Lux. Find out what's his story here, will you? Goodbye. All right, kid. Be good. Oh, it helped his attitude a little bit. Uh, nice, nice to, nice to meet with Walter and his wife, his kind wife, After who's a, a bit Trump's wise. She is. <laughs> uh, don't fight evil with evil, ladies and gentlemen. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble you to turn over your weapons? Sure, here you go. My deepest apologies for the slightest inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. Adieu. Oh, you mustn't. You mustn't have weapons. Yes. Um, okay, so we gotta talk I to... I wager that the army's sending elite units our way. Right Heck, as It's stealing to sit on the... Hold on. Let's sit on the stool and see what if, it, if it's actually breaking the law. Here we go. Uh, uh, it threw the, threw the table. Just like normal. Okay. 
I can't... Uh, uh, okay, hi. Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? I just got here, so no, I haven't. <sighs> ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches. But I'm here for an hour, and my own son just up and disappears on me. So you're a rancher? Yep. Got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners, too. Used to just have the one ranch, but land was easy to grab before the soldiers moved in. Before I knew it, I was running one of the biggest ranching operations east of California. Now everywhere I go, folks I never even met shake my hand and call me Mr. Gunderson. Don't quite know what to make of that. Why's y'all bodyguard able to have a gun? Made me a special arrangement with the hotel. They want to do business with me, they got to play by my rules. A lot of people out there resent success. Might want to take a swipe at me. This makes them think twice. If I'd have been thinking, though, I'd have had him watching my boy instead. Then none of this would have happened. You lost your son? My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the White Glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. Of course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. What business did you have here at the hotel? That's between me and the White Glove Society. But let's just say they control the food supply around here, and I got lots of food to give. But that ain't as welcome as you might think. Let me help you find your son. I'd be more than happy to have you. Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye at this point. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. Ha <laughs> ha, heck said heck. <laughs> heck would be, uh, heckin' appreciative of me finding his heck junior. So, let me mark this quest, I suppose. All right, now we have to ask around. Uh, I wonder if if one of the rewards of this quest is them handing me a steak because it has to do with Brahmin and beef and meat and dealing in food. <laughs> Let's talk to this gentleman here. He looks like he's important. Hello, Mortimer. How may I be of service, sir? Do you have any work that needs done? No, not from the likes of you, I'm afraid. I don't think you'd have the stomach for it. Better look elsewhere. Can you tell me about your organization? My, such a popular question. I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course. But our pedigree was established over generations. Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. That's just the reality we live in. But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. And that's what the White Glove Society is all about. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Those free side okay. bugs aren't worth our time anymore. Uh, where do we find information about the stuff and things around here? The locked door. Find out about the White Glove Society by talking to Marjorie. So we need to. Oh, here she is. Hi. Welcome to the Ultra Lux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. I'm looking for someone who was missing here recently. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human flesh for any reason. It's written in the Charter. Hank Gunnison said he was here to talk business with you. What business? What else? Mr. Gunderson and I have been discussing his livestock. It's put us in a rather delicate position, you see, his coming here. Not that we aren't grateful for his generous offer. But our executive chef, Philippe, has transformed Brahmin steak into a delicacy. 
He really is a genius. Everyone wants it. But a delicacy is just that. Delicate. If everyone can get it, it ceases to be a delicacy. It becomes a perfectly ordinary staple. And if the gourmand serves staples, it would no longer draw the caliber of people it deserves. It would be a diner or a family restaurant. So as much as we'd all love for there to be enough steak for everyone, I'm afraid there are more important things to consider. Who'd you talk to about the disappearance? There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. I'm investigating someone else. A man. He just recently went missing. A man? Well, then this... Well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? What will people say? I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. Is there any way I could talk to the investigator? Why, yes, I think so. If he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our maitre d' Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see, the White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy, even in the face of such impolite accusations. We have nothing to hide here. One more question. Regarding something earlier. Do you see human flesh? Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? We do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances. Though we haven't always been the White Glove Society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. Ta-ta. Wow. So she's forthcoming with information. Um, eludes to uh, them being cannibals at some point. And then she sends us to towards Mr. Top Hat over here. And so we're going to learn more about where this investigator was. How may I be of service, sir? I've heard your group dines on human flesh. Ah, yes. I've heard that one, too. Jealous people say such nasty things. I feel sorry for them. Indeed. All right, I'm actually going to use a speech, a speech buff to see if I can actually get the info out of him. Ah, I still don't have enough speech. And I got addicted to alcohol. <laughs> Whoops. Drank some whiskey. How may I be of service, sir? Marjorie said you gave a free room to a private investigator. Private investigator. Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? Actually, I just need to speak with him. Of course, of course. Now, ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. Indeed. Okay, so he gave me the key. Now I get to go... So out of the main lobby. I, I think the directions are a little bit off too, because this, this over there is out of the main lobby, I think. But we're going this way. Now we must find the investigator's pad. Which is right over here. We do have our pistol at the ready, just in case. Alright. I wish we could kick the door in. Stop right there! Oh, okay. <laughs> a matchbook. Ah! Oh no! Oh dear! I was not ready for this. Who knew that I was going to be jumped by two white glove thugs? Who knew that I would not be prepared for something like this? Like that? I like. I, I don't like that actually. I'm not a. I'm not a fan at all. They're actually doing quite a bit of damage to me, because I did switch to Vera's outfit. Oh my goodness. Ow. Ow, stop! They actually did quite a bit of damage to me. It's because I'm wearing the suit. I decided to wear Vera's outfit to see if I could get more, um, enough charisma to actually get the, the speech rolls that I wanted. But that didn't happen. That didn't work out. 
So, um, okay, so we found the matchbox. We were meeting up with somebody um, and we're probably gonna want to wear this attire a little bit later. So we're gonna take a set of white glove outfit, out, outfits as well. Mm -hmm. 